This is GDC. So watching on Facebook and those who are watching on uh, YouTube. And those who are watching now live and those who are going to be watching later. May the Lord bless you. We love you so much. This is GDC Celebration Center, Washington. And we will come here to join in our service. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, let's put our hands together at the church. Help me welcome all our international visitors in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you. It is such an honor that God had made it in his own wisdom that you be born in such a time as this one. Not that you may become a frustration, but, but you may become a blessing. Uh, since we started this uh, service this morning, we are blessed uh, with every ministry that has been offered at this altar. And I want to say thank you, even to our international visitors and those who have just come from the local. May the Lord bless you. Thank you even for our sister Melka. Thank you. May the Lord bless you. Uh, Reverend K uh, David, <laughs> David, God be your okay. Without just in Kiama. Kiama, we have so many of them. <laughs> so, allow me just to say, uh, Reverend David, may the Lord bless you. Ah. Uh, I didn't know that you are such a worshiper. God, God bless you so much. Now, and I just noted that, uh, you know, God is the giver of giftings. Amen? Keep it up and take it high. It is also good to have such uh, more than one gift when you're blended with more than one gift. And yeah, you will not be like, hey, 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 who will come and help me to do this and that? You're just loaded, a package of God. Keep it up. And uh, yeah, the worst thing is that all the gifting that God has given us, they don't belong to us. They, they just make us to become physical servants to others. Yes. Just the, like the cow with a lot of milk. No matter how dusty it would get, it will be given to others. No matter how right they are, mandizi aikuli mandizi, inaitaji kula. Mbolea. So, <laughs> yeah, we may be having wonderful fruits, but they don't belong to us. We give to others, and also we need others with the fruit so that we may see before their fruit. So this is a, a, a done deal. That as we continue to be loaded, to be blessed of God, ha, we become more indebted for the service of God to our generation. God bless you, missionary. Thank you, Marion. Thank you for... Lois and Sarah, you're doing a good job. Uh, see your prestige, may the Lord bless you. You're doing a good job. It is not in vain. In this kingdom, whenever the devil tells you resign from what you've been called to do, the other side, the devil will be taking you too close to the grave because God is not an abuse of resources. You cannot just be in this life just consuming the air and occupying the space. You become a liability a parasite, a polar. And in this life, God would want you to become relevant, not irrelevant. A success, a blessing. Yes, and that is your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. And today we're going to be uh, breaking our fast. That is to say, it's not just closing. <laughs> that is the first session. We cannot we cannot close it. We just uh, because we've been praying and we started our prayer earlier, actually, I just realized that we've got to lose some weight. Eh? You know, we started our prayer earlier, like now, we'll be hitting 90 days uh, today. And uh, for that reason, the reason why we had to commit ourselves to God and dedicate ourselves to God, not to change God. Prayer has nothing to do with God. It has everything to do with us. Come on now. And uh, that's why, I, as much as we continue to pray, we don't change God. There are so many things that God has for us, but it will require the revelation of God, and it will require the silence of the flesh and the noise from the flesh to make you hear God and understand the things that God gives freely to his people. That is the word of God. So, every time we engage and commit ourselves to pray and fast, we don't change God. Neither do we just change situations. 100% the people who become candidates and beneficiaries of the prayer you pray becomes you. So what God does, instead of God changing so many things that you want him to change, he gives you power to change those things. <laughs> it is until he makes sure that you become a master of whatever has made you to become a slave of it. And that is how Jesus said, arise and take your bed and go. So that you may begin to carry that which has always been carrying you. 
and gain power over everything that had already power over you and become a master of everything that had actually made you to become a slave. Those are the kingdom treats and uh, we are beneficiaries. As, as, as we wind our prayer and fasting this uh, afternoon, I'm just going to bring the highlights. Remember, we are in the year of great grace. And one of the things that I will be mentioning here would be like in the serving grace. Serving grace, saving grace is there. But also we have serving grace. And also as we grow in the grace of serving, grow in the grace of serving. One of the benefits of prayer and fasting is in the book of Isaiah chapter 58, from verses 6 all the way to 14. And I'll be a little bit fast because I'll be joining another service soon, immediately at 1 p.m. So in the book of Isaiah 58, from verses 6 to 14, the Bible says, Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bands of the wicked and to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor to the, uh, the poor that are cast out of thy house? But thou seest the naked that thou cover him, and that thou hide not yourself from thy own flesh. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine hell that shall spring forth speedily. And thy rushes that shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Then shalt thou call unto the Lord, and he shall answer. And thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Hear a young. If thou take away from the needs of thee the yoke of putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity, and if thou draw out of thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light arise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as no day. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in the, in, in the drought, and make fat thy bone. And thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places, and thou shalt rise up the foundation of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, and the restorer of the paths of the dwelling uh, to dwell in. That in. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on, on my holy day, and call the Sabbath delight, the holy of the Lord honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken. Amen. It's a very powerful word that brings to us and to our attention the benefit of praying and fasting. And every time now, because we've been praying and fasting, now the job has started. Amen. The job has started. Because in this life, uh, one of our friends, our teacher told us, in this life, don't serve people with your source. Serve people with your overflow. Serve people with your overflow. Amen. Don't serve people with your last drop of your juice. Serve people with overflow. <laughs> All the kind of the prayer we've been doing, they didn't belong to anybody, they belong to us. So that after that, we now become engaged to the issues and matters and destinies of our generation and our nation. So that as we do it and as we serve, we don't faint on the way. We don't faint on the way. And, don't, and again, we don't become hesitant. And then we don't, we don't like, we, we don't like it. That's why you see, in this, in this noble calling of God, as we purpose to pray and as we purpose to fast, the Bible says, the kind of the fasting that God has chosen is, number one, is to lose the bonds of wickedness. To lose the bonds of wickedness. There are people God had called and they have great destiny. But they still suffer under the bondage and yokes of wickedness. They are so much connected to wickedness. No matter how much they try to be good, they just find themselves doing evil and wicked things. 
So as we pray, we begin to lose, to lose them. We lose them from those bones. And we bring, we, we break those bondages and we set them free. They've been long, looking and long, longing to be free, but they need somebody to take charge, to take control. Now, as we engage ourselves to the purposes and the destiny of our generation, never forget to lose them from the bondage of wickedness. Did you hear that? We are, uh, we are accountable for their destiny. We lose them in the name of Jesus. And then number two, we, we lose them with undo the heavy burdens and let the oppressed go free. We undo the heavy burdens. There are people God has called and there are people with great destiny, but there's so much loaded with unnecessary baggages. These are the heavy burdens. The reason why it has turned into a heavy burden, it is because their trust in God is very minimal. And they value the burden they carry to be so huge and big more than their God. So what we do here, we break those burdens. There are people in life who are just tired. They wake up in the morning, they feel happy, but all the same, when they think on how they can wake up and go in the house of God, they feel tired. They are struggling with the heavy burdens, unnecessary burdens. Some of the burdens they carry, it is generational burdens. It is burdens from the ancestors. And they still carry them. They are loaded with the heavy burdens. And their plate is full. Whenever there comes a chance for them to serve others, they feel like they are deceived, abused, and denied. So they carry heavy burdens and their plate is full. The heavy burden has occupied the space that God wants to use to put in blessings so that they may become blessings to other people. And uh, we break and destroy those heavy burdens in Jesus' name. This is the good work that can only be done when people are praying and fasting. We deal with unnecessary burden. We deal with unnecessary burden in the name of Jesus Christ. Because in this life, you got to be free. You got to be free. You got to enjoy and not to endure life. Come on now. Hallelujah. Amen. Enjoy and not to endure life. Because heavy burdens have been dealt with. Heavy burdens have been dealt with. Some of the sicknesses and the diseases that people always go through, most of them, 69%, they are the result of the heavy burdens. And this is the heavy burdens of mental illness, anxiety, worries, uncertainty, you know, of becoming of wheels just for no reason. Fear of unknown. Those are heavy burdens and bitterness, anger, uh, resentment, unforgiveness, moods and feelings. Those are heavy burdens that actually people can carry all by themselves. The Bible says we break those burdens. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is the true fasting that God had children. And another thing is that, that you may deal with, uh, with the bread. Before we go to there, the Bible says, and uh, that you break every yoke. Heavy burdens and break every yoke. And you see, God, God is not the breaker of yokes. He has given us mandated power to break every yoke. So that you may deal with those yokes, yokes of limitations, yoke of delay, yoke of disappointment, yokes of almost there, almost there. When you're just almost there, there is a bonding, a yoke that pulls you down. When you're just almost there, seeing your break morning, your breakthrough, there is a yoke that pulls you back. When you are called to serve, when you are needed in the kingdom, when you are needed somewhere serving, you are just suffering from a yoke that pulls you, a yoke of your culture, of your tradition, a yoke of your background, a yoke from your family that pulls you, a yoke that tells you no one has ever been a minister in your family, no one has ever been rich in your family. So as you begin to become rich and prosper, there are yokes of sicknesses and diseases that begin to haunt you to make you never enjoy the liftings of God. So we deal with those yokes, yokes of limitations, yokes of barriers and hindrances. So we break them in the name of Jesus Christ. And as today we partake the Holy Communion, those things will begin to happen 
unawares. It will begin to happen even in our life. It will begin to cause us to feel the freedom and enjoy life and actually an open space in the spiritual realm. So we break every yoke and we break every bonding in the name of Jesus. The other thing is that you may give your food to the hungry and that is to deal thy bread to the hungry and that you bring the poor that are cast out of thy house. And this is to say that like uh, Reverend Moe said the other day, <clears throat> now because they could not accommodate that family, they give them, oh, okay, they build them a house actually, that is what they did. And that is what the Bible had called us to do. That we also need to understand that we are mandated in building houses for other people. Building houses, not only building houses, actually even giving them food. Not only doing that, at times we pay their rent. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. That is how we've been called to do. And to make everybody to have a comfortable way of living in this practical life, in Jesus' name. And the Bible says also we share our, uh, we give out our, uh, our clothes. We, 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 the Bible says when thou seest the naked that thou cover him, and that thou, you may not hide yourself from thy own flesh. Even the naked people, we give out our clothes. You don't need to, to have so many of them, like a walking wardrobe. Sometimes give them, let them go, have very few. Have very few. Then give them out to them. Ha, hallelujah. Amen. That is the word of God. Amen. You, you will know there will be a lot of benefit. This is the true fasting that God has chosen. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, even those who belong to your house, those who belong to the kingdom, don't just take your resources very far away. And there are people who are hungry in your house. But begin by feeding those. Don't just give clothes so far away and there are people who are naked in your house. Begin by those. So that as you love yourself, you'll be able to love others. Does that make sense? Yes. Amen. So the Bible says, <coughs> um, <laughs> then, it is only then, when you do that, it is, a, it, is, it is a duty with a condition but with a benefit. It is a duty with condition, but with a lot of them. The Bible says, it is only then and then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy health, thy health shall spring forth speedily. As you do these things, not because you are healthy, you are doing them as you are still sick, suffering from some other mental ailment, you are suffering from physical ailing, and you see, as you do it, not because you are complete, not because you are whole, not because everything is working for you. Not because you understand everything. That's why the Bible says your light shall break forth. The Bible says when there is darkness, darkness in Hebrew means, in Greek means, confusion. That is the reason, the interpretation of darkness in Greek. In Greek, darkness is confusion. So the Bible says when you begin to offer those things and to let go of those blessings and to let go of those gifts to other people, and as you serve other people, the Bible says, then God will give you clarity. God will give you enlightenment. God will give you a knowledge, understanding, skills. And God will make your light shine. It will shine as the new day. When everybody is complaining about confusion in the world, your light will be as the new day. Meaning it will be so bright that you will not have any worry to fear. And it will shine upon your life. Where others have failed and they don't understand what they must do and should do, here comes you. You have the revelation because light is enlightenment. You have the vision. You have the direction because you have light. And you are not confused of what you should do. You have clarity of what you should do. And whatever you do will be very articulate. So the Bible says when you serve, it is only then when you do what you have just read from the above, that will be the true fasting. The true fasting. And every time you pray and fast, God makes sure that you got to become committed to other people's issues. 
Come on now. No matter how devilish they are, no matter how wicked they are, no matter how they don't love you, you must get committed to other people's issues. Not to discuss them, not to belittle them, not to make them become bad or wicked, but how you think of them, how they can become well, how they can become healthy, how they can live a successful life. As you think of that, the Bible says God will not let you struggle. He will make your light shine. Yes. This, is what, this, is what, this is what the interpretation is. When the Bible says that your light shines, you become branded. You become branded to become what God had called you to be. And people will know you, not just by who you are, more than that, by what you do. You become branded. Like when you mention Google, you see the service of Google. When you say Facebook, what do you see? Services in the Facebook. When you say YouTube, what do you see? Services of the YouTube. So that is how it is. You become branded. You become branded. When you say Coca-Cola, what do you see? When you say Samsung, when you say uh, when you say iPhone, what do you see? You see the service. When you say Microsoft, what do you see? You see the service. You become branded. You become branded. <laughs> and then and then the Bible says, and then your health will spring forth speedily. As you serve others in your condition of pain and sickness, as you continue and engage consistency, the Bible says your healing will spring forth speedily. Speedily. Yani yaraka. Whatever you're doing is dealing with the, with the, with the stubborn demons. So, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be with your rare reward. Or rather, you word. So, the glory, the righteousness, your righteousness, your righteousness shall go before thee. Your righteousness, the word righteousness stands for your right standing. You are always in the right perfect path, perfect will, right standing in God. That wherever you will be and wherever you will be going, you will be in the right timing of God. Have you ever gone to a place and somebody say, wow, you just timed me. You are right on time. That is how it is, that your right standing in God will go before you. That you will never be disappointed. Your right standing in God will also go before you. In this life, when you purpose to serve others, when you purpose to lose the bones of wickedness to those who are held, don't discuss them. The reason why you're here, it is because you carry the keys of other people's uh, destiny. Don't discuss them. And you feel, if you feel like you have some effects of feelings because of what they are and what they're doing, now that which touches you, you also can have a ministry towards the sin. Because you can do it from the heart and not just from the mind, not just from the wallet. <laughs> then thou shalt call and the Lord shall answer. And thou, sh thou shalt cry and he shall say, here I am. And as you do that, when you give your food to the hungry, when you lose and break the yokes of those who are held and bound, the Bible says, you shall call and the Lord shall say, hey, here I am. And you shall cry and the Lord will answer. That is a promise. And it shall be then. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke of putting forth of the finger, do you know the yoke of putting finger? They could have pointed to them. Umeskiati leo, one more now. Can you see him check? One more. A bungalay, who is here? One more. In a kidole chako, kidole chako. We bring a summer who shall know a panana, his own type of panana. Ukisha to Lisa is a panana going in a panana, to Lisa Domo, wandered in Dogo, to Lisa Bodhi wandered in Dogo. Usha to Lisa panana, panana, panana. Biblia inasema wewe tuliza pangana. Ushatuliza pangana basi Bwana anaanza kukuponya. Pangana ndio inaletea watu magonjwa. Pangana. 
kwa sababu huko kwako maisha yako ni mzuri alafu unaanza kuingilia boma ya mtu iliyobomoka unaanza kukunena mambo ya boma ya mtu iliyobomoka ushapeleka panga zako za hiyo boma mashaitu zinakuwa na access ninasema kumbe waipenda tukutembelee jioni tukule sapa ndio <laughs> panga sasa bibi nasema ondoa panga hiyo kidole tena na maisha ya watu. Hii dunia hatuna malaika. Na watu na biatu. Watu na vijitu. So, achana watu. So, ondoa panganga ya kidole. Hallelujah. At nayo utafunguliwa. Amen. And thy hell shall spring forth speedily in Jesus name. And the Bible says, utaitana na Mungu atasema, "Hey, I can hear you." Talk to me now. Amen. Allah will send a comfort if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul then shall thy light shine in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday. And then the Bible says and that the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones. Well, you begin to prosper and to progress even in drought season in recessions where people say economy is hitting the ground that is when god will raise you <laughs> and he will cause your light to shine in darkness amen and he will also make your bones to be fat bones to be fat that is to say he will give you more calcium in your bones so that you may be able to work and to serve with enough energy he will give you muscles to handle matters Amen. he will give you muscles to handle matters and to make the work done that is the word of god hallelujah and then you will not depend on season because you will be like a watered garden like a spring of water whose waters fails not you will not depend on season did you hear that this is the true fact thing just remember where we had come from all the way from the top how you have committed your life to lose and to deal and to give your fruit to the hungry how you committed yourself to deal with yokes and bondages when you see people behaving the way they behave it is not they love that there is the power and the food behind it and when you begin to deal with that force and that power behind the action and the behavior then the bible says then god will cause your light to shine and he will heal you speedily and you will call unto him and he will answer you will cry and he will say here i am and then he will make you uh, he will make you he will, uh, when you remove your finger and they are pointing the pointing of the finger pointing other people then god will make you to become like a water garden that you don't depend on season you don't depend on time you'll be blessed in the morning you'll be blessed in the afternoon you'll be blessed in night that your time all your time will be blessing time in jesus name Amen. and the bible says <laughs> the bible says out of that <laughs> oh jesus christ 12 and they that shall be of thee shall build the old west places that thou shall rise up the foundation of many generations thou shall be called the repairer of the bridge and the restorers of the paths to dwell in now when you begin to do that as we had started there up then god will now begin to make you not only a minister but he will now send you to the marketplace not only to become relevant in the church but also you become relevant in the marketplace not only to have a voice in the church but also you shall have a voice in the marketplace the bible says that god will make those who belong to you those who comes around you you begin you begin to teach them on how to do investment you begin to to flip houses you buy old houses and make them become new you begin to restore a desolation of many years and make it fresh where people had said we cannot settle here ni hapa duniani kwa mchanga hivi si bengoni yeah they peer they peer of the desolate city that is to get a land 
And then you begin to build a, a, a gifted community. <laughs> a place where people would say we cannot, no people can live here. And then you go there with the, with the drill balls and water cans. And then you bring electricity. You begin to, to own real estates without struggle. Amen. <laughs> because you started from a farm, you have exercised true fasting. You don't, you're not happy when you see people are, are operating under bondage. You lose people. Do you, know, do you know, even serving God will require, you need to pray that God, I refused to experience any kind of bondage as I serve you. Do you, do you know there are people who will always be good as long as they are not serving? <laughs> Wait until the day you will appoint them to begin to serve. Masha ito za kwa uvi na yunga. Anaanza kuamuka na homa. Anaku text. Nimeamuka ni kasikia chwe. Mafili mingi. So. <laughs> but as long as they are just members, no, no problem. And they will not be offended. They can, they can survive. Mm -hmm. And the devil will not fight them because they are just, no they are just there. Mm -hmm. They are not making much impact. impact. Mm -hmm. That is the good word. Mm -hmm. But the moment God is calling them to be where they can be of great impact, mm -hmm. the devil will try to stop them. Mm -hmm. That is when they wake up in the morning and they feel like Sunday should be a, another busy day. We should go Mahera instead of coming to church. And that's why the Bible says, when you be careful to, to consider the day, the Sabbath day, it has two meanings. Mm -hmm. A day of your worship, mm -hmm. and also making sure that you don't deny the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus Christ has become our Sabbath. Amen. 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 <laughs> and that's why the Bible says, and I will open a door for you. Because Revelation 3 8 says, you have kept my word and you have not denied my name. Yes. I will open a door for you. Yes. You have kept my word, and you have not denied my name. Yes. What is in the name? The name is Jesus. Yes. And that is how you guard the Sabbath with all diligence. Yes. Also, you guard and give value to the holy moment and time of worship. And as you do that, the Bible says, and I will cause you to ride on high places, mm. not low places, mm. high places. Mm. To ride on high places, it is to operate on high frequencies. Mm. Just receiving a call, ukiwa katikati ya watu, wanaweza kustuka. Utasama, wasichukwe hiyo ya nini? Ya 60 million dollars. To go here, eight ten million dollars, eight thousand. And now I'm going to What are you talking about? Is that for real? No, sir, it's real. Is that what you do with that? God will cause you to operate on high places. Listen to this. <laughs> your rising in life will be in the package of your service to your generation. Your rising in life is in the package of your service to your generation. Your rising to high places has nothing to do with you. Has everything to do with your generation. Your rising to high places. The reason why God takes you there, not to brag over other people and not to make other people feel intimidated. You don't rise to intimidate your enemy. You don't rise to intimidate other people. You don't rise to build a name for yourself. As you rise, you become a servant. And actually, that will become another higher certification of becoming more accountable to other people's lives. Because you will not only build real estate in Kenya, you will as well build real estate in Malawi, mm. and Burundi, mm. and Rwanda mm. for other people. When you turn, guys, my little. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. This is the true fasting mm -hmm. that God had ordained. Mm -hmm. When you give your food to the sick, mm -hmm. when you give your clothes, when you build shelters, mm -hmm. and when you lose the yokes mm -hmm. and break the bones 
when you destroy the heavy burdens and when you honor the seventh day, the day of the Lord, when you honor the day of the gathering, <laughs> the day of the gathering, and when you guard jealously the name of Jesus, that wherever you go, it is not about your name, it is about the name of Jesus. Like I have a mandate of raising a Jesus generation and a Bible nation. I don't build up my name. I want every attraction to come to Jesus. Every attention to reflect to Jesus. As I lift him, as I glorify him, he brings many to him. Hallelujah. That is our mandate in the kingdom of God. And for that reason, I want to conclude and we want to have the the breaking of our fasting today by partaking and through partaking of the Holy Communion, even as we dedicate ourselves for the year and dedicate the year for God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> We're gonna dedicate ourselves for for this year that yes, we shall become men and women of impact. And also our ear shall be dedicated for God. Amen. Amen. And uh, out of that, the Bible says in this first Timothy. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verses 12. For which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep which, is, which I have committed unto him against that day. God is able to keep that which has been dedicated to him. He is able to keep and preserve. And that's why Paul says, I am not ashamed of these things, because whatever is happening to me cannot finish me, because my life has been dedicated to God. And God is able to preserve that which has been dedicated to him until that day. Amen. So we're going to dedicate ourselves for the year. And we're going to dedicate the year for the Lord. Amen. 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 And that is what we are doing in our prayer and in our partaking of the Holy Communion. Amen. <clears throat> and in our partaking of the Holy Communion, uh, some of the benefit that we have in the Holy, as we partake the Holy Communion, seven benefits very quickly as we partake the Holy Communion. Okay, I have all these notes. If you need them, I can send them to you email. <clears throat> so, all these benefits, all these benefits of uh, in partaking of the Holy Communion, seven benefits in partaking the Holy Communion. The Bible says, <clears throat> uh, the Bible says in the book of. Uh, in the book of First uh, Corinthians, chapter ten, verses sixteen to seventeen, the Bible says, "And the cup of blessing which I bless is, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? And the bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we do, for we do many are one bread and one body. For we are all particles of the one bread. So, the benefit number number one is." We remember not only the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, but also the resurrection that he died for us and the reason why he died. We remember the cause and the reason why he died. That was so precious. And that will tell you that I have been bought at a price. It will make you understand what is your value in life. If it costed God to give his very best for you, you begin to understand the tag price of your value in life. So benefit number two, um, the life of Jesus is formed in us. Do you know the life of everything is in the blood? And the DNA, the DNA of a baby is from the father, where there is the blood of the father in the DNA of a kid, of a kid. And you see, Jesus had the DNA of God. Jesus had the DNA of God. Did you hear that? Jesus had the DNA of God. Because kids carried the DNA of their father. Jesus had the DNA of God. Amen. Now we are partaking the blood of Jesus. What are we partaking? The DNA of Jesus together with of God. <laughs> Does that make sense? 
and every life of every creature is in the blood. And that's why God has given a warning in Levitical. As you kill any animal, don't take mutura yadamu. Don't take its blood. So don't take the blood. <laughs> because the life of every animal is in the blood. So we partake the blood of Jesus and then we get the life of Jesus. And then number three, we receive the impartation of his power and victory. We receive the impartation of God's power and the power of Jesus and his victory. But then number four, we receive the favor from all men, both from God and people. As we partake, we receive favor from God and we receive favor from people. As we partake the blood, we receive favor from God and from people. That is the power. That is power. That is power. And this is the blood that is working in us. And then number five, we become more united as the body of Christ. As we partake the blood of Jesus, we become more united. We become one thing, one family. Because we are united by the blood. It is the blood that brings us together. It is the blood of Jesus that has made you to become my sister and my brother. We become more united. And I'll become, I'll begin to be uh, my brother's keeper. But then number six, we minister and build one another. As we partake the Holy Communion, we begin to minister and to build one another. Tunajengana, tunayimwana, hakuna kuwana. Kwa sababu, ile ile damu yetu ya ukoi na nyamazisho na damu ya Yesu. Ile damu ya kisirani ya hasira ya revenge mission. Ina nyamazishwa. Si maandiko inasema damu ya Yesu inanena sana kuliko damu ya habibi. So, as we partake the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus has voice. It is silence those voices of revenge. <laughs> Bitterness, anger, and resentment. And unforgiveness. And then number six, we experience addition and increase in life. We experience addition and increase in the body of Christ, and also even in life. That is, all this what I'm reading to you is in the Bible, in the book of Acts, chapter 2, from verses 46. Here are all in the summer seven benefits. is from the Bible, in the book of Acts, chapter 2, from verses 46, all the way to 47, seven benefits. But we're going to experience the addition, the increase, the multiplication. Amen. Because there are so many covenants, some of us were taken through without knowing. Others, some of us were, we were taken through those covenants through circumcision. Others, we were taken those through covenants when we were born. And the others, we were just taken through those covenants when we are dreaming. And others, we were initiated through those covenants through our names. So when we partake the blood of Jesus, we silence all other voices. Amen. It becomes a higher covenant than any other covenant. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Our God and our Father, we are so grateful. Thank you for this wonderful moment. In that short time that you've given us to gather in this house, oh God, we know there is a reason behind our gathering and our coming together. It is my prayer, God, even as we partake the Holy Communion today, let the life of Jesus be real. And as we continue to be accountable to other people's destiny and life, God, we shall exercise the true fasting. Even as we break our 90 days fasting today, God, we dedicate and surrender ourselves to you, that you may take charge and take control. Father God, whatever we're going to do, we're not going to build our name. We're going to build and to rise the name of Jesus and him alone will gonna be glorified. We lift him up and he will bring many and win many to himself. Father God, may you be glorified and be lifted up as it was in the days of the wilderness where the, the bronze or snake was lifted and they were healed. Those who were bitten by the poisonous snake were healed. And today we raise and lift up the name of Jesus that those who are wounded and those who are sick be healed. 
and those who are far away be called by your name in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for this wonderful day and we thank you for this wonderful service. We dedicate everything that we are and our families and the labor of our works and our careers, our professionals, our calling and our businesses, oh God. We register the name of the Lord God upon it now in the name of Jesus. That in the name that is above all of the name, that whatever we put our hands into will begin to increase and to flourish. Even as we become influence in the body of Christ, the same shall be done in the marketplace. God, we thank you because we are loaded with your blessings that make us rich and add no sorrow to it. We thank you, Lord, and we love you. Bless our listeners and our viewers in Facebook and YouTube. Oh God, I pray. Bless them and do them good. Whatever has been their desire, God, I pray this day. If there be any stubborn demon, yokes of wicked inheritance that has pursued their life, I break it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. I break every yoke, I break every bondage. In the name of Jesus, I destroy every yoke of heaviness that has been set upon their shoulders. I bring it down, I pull it down, I lift it up, and I destroy it by the fire of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there be any weaknesses, weak, weakness, of, of yoke of sicknesses and diseases of inheritance. I break those sicknesses and diseases right now and I call these people free and let them be free from every pain and from every sickness in the name of Jesus Christ. Even as we partake the Holy Communion this afternoon, oh God, if there be any initiation of covenant we were made to go through, I nullify every voice and every accusation, judgment and spell ever speaking against our rising as from today in the name of Jesus Christ. I bring down every altar of wickedness and we silence the voices of wicked priesthood of darkness that has been stationed to speak against our family, against our marriages, against our good health, against our destiny, against our businesses and our projects. We silence those voices. We destroy the priesthood of darkness. It has no power over our life, our families, our ministries, and our projects in Jesus' name. And today I decree, if there be any seed that God was not planted by you, we are planted by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we decree and declare, it is your will that shall prevail, and it is your purpose that shall prevail. It is above all of the wills and purposes of the enemy in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father God. Today we decree and declare, even as we begin another dimension, oh Father God, we shall be careful to do all that which is called by your holy name. We shall be accountable to the destinies of our generation. Bless your servant and bless your people. Even as we partake the Holy Communion today, we can only be blessed and we can only be lifted up. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and believe. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. So, we shall not be near that, but the Holy Communion. Hallelujah. Are you blessed this evening? Yes. Thank you. So, we're going to have uh, the partaking of the Holy Communion together, and uh, for that reason, I want to say that we have just begun. We have just begun. And we are going to commit ourselves to the things that matter. And actually, serving our generation in the will of God and in the purposes of God. Hallelujah. And none of us shall be taken away before time. Amen. In Jesus' name. We are here to stay. We are here to stay. We are here. Tukwaba kuka. Asi kidogo kuka. Hallelujah. Na atu atu balungisis. Mrs. Nuala wanakad. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, this is the cup. We have the cup of the blood. And the Bible says, after they had eaten, Jesus took the cup and he blessed the cup and said, This is the cup of my new covenant. Take ye and drink it. And as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. He lifted up, he lifted up it up and gave thanks. Father, we thank you for this cup. Even as we partake it, O God, it will give us a remembrance of our connection in the new covenant. We're going to operate in the new covenant. We thank you for the cup in Jesus' name. Amen. Kisha badaye, akachukua mwili, wakine, mwili wake, akasema, hundyo mwili wangu ambao utaka utolewa, na mwili utolewa kusababia wengi. It is for this reason that my body has been given for many and to many. 
And he said, by the breaking and by the stripes, a breaking of his body, you'll be healed. Akachukua mkate, akasema, mega, eat, eat this bread together, in Jesus' name. Akachukua, akaumega, akasema, it was broken because of many, and because of your sins. And now because of that, by the stripes of our Lord Jesus, I decree and declare, if there be any sickness that has been ordained by the enemy from hell to kill you, to stop you from enjoying life, by the virtue of partaking this bread, your body is healed. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen and amen. So as we partake this, um, the bread, it is together with everything. So, Ushai Chukua, ina kila kitu. Kuna mkate, na kuna divide, na tumeibariki. Karibuni katika jina la Yesu. Karibuni katika jina la Yesu. You're most welcome in Jesus' name. You're most welcome in Jesus' name. You're most welcome. Partake the Holy Communion together. Partake it, partake it in Jesus' name. Let's partake the Holy Communion. As we partake, we partake the blood of Jesus. It speaks on your behalf. It speaks on your behalf. It speaks for your destiny, for your future. It speaks for your generation, for your family in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, we love you. We thank you for this wonderful moment. We thank you, Father, even as we partake the Holy Communion. Let the blood of Jesus work and operate in our lives in a bigger way than we can ever imagine. For God, you're fighting all battles. And that's why we're here. And we can never be defeated in our generation. We shall remain at the top and not beneath. Because this is the reason why you give your son Jesus, that he may die for our sins. That we may become partakers of, of, of the blessings of Abraham in Jesus' name. Tufungwe pamoja. Pale juu kuna mkate. First cover is for the bread, and the second cover is for the for the blood. Amen and amen. So we're gonna partake the bread together in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's use it together. Yeah, open it from the top. The top one is for them. Yeah. Thank you, you got it already. Ah, let's swallow. Let's drink the cup together. This is not a command from another apostle. It is a command from God. And Jesus himself said, do this in remembrance of me. And as you do it, you remember my death and my resurrection. And so it is done. In Jesus' name. You can take a moment and tell God, thank you for this wonderful time of great victory that you have shed upon my life. Just tell God, thank you. Tell God, thank you. Tell God, thank you in Jesus' name. That's your holy name. In Jesus' name. Thank you for the blood. Thank you, God, because there is life in the blood. And the life of every creature is in the blood. And this afternoon, oh God, as we partake the blood of Jesus, we receive the connection of the new DNA. Because covenant is in the blood. We are partakers of the promises of God. We become sons of God. And by the blood of Jesus, let all other blood be silent. And whatever pertains and goes with it. And as for today, it is the blood of Jesus that will continue to speak in our lives. It will speak healing. It will speak deliverance. It will speak favor and grace upon our life. It will speak increase and multiplication. It will speak long life. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Be overcame the devil because of the testimonies of their mouth and the blood of Jesus.
And as from today, we are going to lead a victorious life. It's to lead a winning life by the blood of Jesus. We are loose and delivered from every wicked, wicked, evil inheritance. And as from today, we are going to walk in victory and to reign and to ride on high places in Jesus' name. We thank you for the healing of our body and by the stripes of our Lord Jesus, we are healed. We celebrate your healing and whatever we receive today is permanent. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord give you good. Shalom, shalom. Thank you to our online viewers, those who are in Facebook and YouTube. May the Lord bless you. I bless you with the blessings of God that make you rich and add no sorrow. In Jesus' name, amen.